Hi, this is JP from Nota Lights over Arkham. This time I'm playing Agnes Baker with the Mind's Eye deck. I actually already have played this deck in Arkham Con's blob event with Base Odin from the Twisted Tentacle Inn, and the deck performed quite well there, so I decided to make a solo play video using the same deck. So we are playing uh, Murder at the Excelsior Hotel scenario and let's look at the deck first. So the deck revolves around Mindsai. Uh, as it is a Myriad card, there are three copies of Mindsai in the deck. Uh, Mindsai is a bit of a special card for Mystics. It is the first card using the double arcane slot so there won't be any other assets that take up the arcane slot in this deck. Instead, there are plenty of events like Drawn to the Flame, Ethereal Form, Read the Signs, uh, Spectral Razor for a bit of more fighting power, and of course the Ward of Protections. In the ally slots, I have uh, David Renfield and Miss Doyle, and of course Agnes's best friend Peter Sylvester to mitigate the uh, horror uh, she is taking. Other than that, because the deck has a lot of uh, accessory slot items, I've included two Relic Hunters and one Charisma to the deck, so I can have multiple. Uh, Accessory slot items like the Shining Trapezohedron. Uh, hope I won't butcher the name that bad. And uh, of course, uh, one Holy Rosary to boost Agnes's willpower for the Mind's Eye. And as a last change to the deck before the blob event, I decided to include two copies of Jewel of Aurelius uh, because this deck really needs. Uh, some card draw and uh, Jewel of our Reolus provides that. That's basically the deck. Uh, I've already included the three basic weaknesses because this is a 90, uh, I mean, a 29 experience deck. So I had to have three basic weaknesses in the deck in standalone. So there are, is Amnesia, Paranoia and the 30th Vision. And nothing that bad, but uh, let's see if those weaknesses come up in awkward situations. But that's enough of the deck. So let's look at the scenario a bit. Uh, as we are playing Murder at the Excelsior Hotel, uh, we start with the Blood Stained Dagger in play. Uh, we start in the room 225, and there is one clue in the location and a shroud of three. Uh, what we need to do is uh, we need to find clues and spend one clue per investigator to draw the top card of the leads deck, which is here. And when we have two leads in play, we advance. The agenda is that we have <laughs> stumbled upon a murder or at least a person has been murdered and we have the bloodstained dagger in hand so we don't know what happened because we blacked out and we are trying to find out what happened here and uh, all that good stuff but I won't go into that much detail in the story so let's get started if you like my content hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything I have pre-shuffled the decks already, so let's draw our opening hand. So we are hoping to find one copy of the Mind's Eye asset. Uh, unfortunately, we have two copies of Beetle Sylvester. Uh, we draw another card for the Amnesia. I think uh, we really need to dig for the Mind's Eye. I could uh, keep the scroll of prophecies and we don't need two copies of Peter. So I'll keep 
uh, one copy of Peter Sylvester and uh, the scroll of prophecies. I'll discard the spectral erasers and we draw three more cards. So uh, we get my mind side times two, and that's a good thing because uh, mind side uh, when in play uh, we can do a fast triggered ability to discard a copy of mind side from our hand and place two secrets on the cop on this copy of mind side. So if it's in play, so. We basically recharge it with the other copies. So this is a decent starting hand. And we already have a weapon for fighting. And because the weapon has uh, ability to take one horror, we can deal more damage with Agnes. As her special ability is to place... A, when you place a horror on Agnes, you can deal one damage to an enemy at your location. So that is quite a good synergy with this Bloodstained Dagger and Agnes. So let's shuffle the deck again and start playing. I think we don't have to rush the scroll of prophecies into the onto the table that fast. So I think we start by playing Mind's Eye and play Peter next turn. So this turn we can investigate using the mind side and maybe charge the because I have the amnesia in the deck I think I'll just charge the mind side again uh, right right away so we don't lose the any uh, cards for amnesia so first action I'll play down the mind side it takes up two arcane slots so I'll place it that way so I remember I don't have any extra uh, arcane slots to use and fast trigger ability I'll discard mine side from my hand and place uh, was two charges yep so two additional secrets on the mine side so we have a, a really supercharged mine side in play right away and the mine side cost three so we discard three resources second action I'll exhaust the mind side. I'll use one charge and I'll investigate using my willpower. So I'm investigating five versus three. I think we really don't need the scroll for uh, prophecies that much. So I'll commit that. So I'm investigating six versus three. And it's a zero. So we get this clue. And actually, last action, I'll spend the clue to get the first uh, leads card in play. So we get the Tome of Rituals. And put, uh, Revelation, put it into play in your play area. Post when you are defeated, give it uh, control of Tome of Ritual to another investigator. Well, hope we won't get defeated. <laughs> and uh, that is my turn. No enemies, we go to upkeep, I draw a meat cleaver, uh, really don't need that much, and we gain one resource, so next turn we can play down Peter. And that is our turn, and let's go to the next turn. Uh, we get a doom onto the agenda, and the encounter card is blood on your hands, test willpower 2. Increase the difficulty of this test by one for each innocent enemy in the victory display. If you fail, take two horror. If you are at the crime scene location, you must also choose and discard random. Uh, uh, choose and discard a card from your hand. So uh, we are testing uh, five versus two. I'll just. I I really don't need the meat cleaver that much. Uh, and I don't... well, let's not discard it. So, um, I'm testing 5 versus 2. It's a cultist, and cultist is minus 1. If there is an innocent enemy in the victory display, reveal another token. Well, uh, at the moment there isn't. So we pass the uh, blood on your hands. And that is the mythos phase, so let's go to the investigation phase. 
Uh, there are three actions we could do in the room. Uh, one is uh, willpower three, and we would clean up the blood. Uh, one is uh, strength uh, fight three, and we hit hide the body. And one is uh, intellect three, and we tidy up the room. But as much as I could use the charges on my side to do the, all of these things, I think we try to play this so that we just ignore those and uh, deal with the cops when they come. So uh, first action I'll use the three resources I have to play down Peter Sylvester. So now my willpower is six and agility is four, so those help me a lot. Second action, I'll move into the sweet balcony. The sweet balcony is a two shroud location with one clue. And uh, I think for the last action, I will spend another charge from mine's eye. And investigate using my willpower. So I'm investigating six versus four. And I get another zero. So we get this clue. And we don't have an action to um, spend the clue yet. But next turn we'll be able to advance the uh, act. So that is my turn. No enemies. We go to upkeep. We ready up and draw one card. We get the four of cups and we gain one resource. So that is our turn, and let's go to the next turn. We add another Doom, and the encounter card for this turn is... <laughs> blood on your hands, who shuffled this deck anyway. So, now that we have Peter in play, we are testing 6 versus 2. And uh, we are at the crime scene location, so if we fail, we have to discard something and take two horror. But let's see what happens. It's a minus one, so we pass easily. And that is the middle space. First action, I'll spend the clue. And the second uh, lead card is ma manager's key, stained by blood. And same text, put it in uh, revelation, put it in the play in your play area, force the environment to be there. Somebody else gets control of it. So now we have the two uh, leads cards in play. They remove the rest of this deck, and then uh, because we control two leads assets, we advance. So we put each of the set aside locations into play. We remove the remainder of the leads deck from the game. Depending on which lead assets are in play, shuffle six cards into the encounter deck as follows, along with the encounter discard pile. And because this setup step takes a bit of time, I'll pause the video and get uh, right back when after I've done the setup. Okay, so uh, we put the locations into play. So there is the hotel roof, room 212, which is at, uh, locked at the moment. Uh, room 245 and then the office which is locked and well we have the manager's key so we can enter there and basement locations in play uh, in addition we shuffled three copies of hotel security into the encounter deck and also uh, three copies of cultist of the enclave into the deck so there are <laughs> plenty of uh, enemies to deal with from there and now uh, we have the objective to learn more about your leads by placing clues on them using abilities on some locations the more clues the better at the end of the round you may choose to advance if each leads asset has at least one clue per investigation on it hint if you wish to pre uh, present this evidence to the police you may wish to have at least two clues per investigator on each lead asset instead so uh, we only have 
use spawn action this round so we'll continue by moving uh, from the balcony back to 225 and let's continue moving to the second floor hall and because we're not in of any uh, rush at the moment I think we don't use the ability to make an extra move at the second floor hall so we could uh, move again to a connecting location and then reveal a token and if it's a bad token uh, then we draw the top card of the encounter deck but let's let's not push our luck so that is our turn no enemies we go to upkeep i'll draw a card we get another copy of peter's Pestre, and we gain one resource so that is the turn let's go to the next turn we had the third room here so we advance the agenda one so we put the set aside search and monroe into play in the foyer and we spawn one set aside arkham officer enemy at the second floor hall if there are three or four investigators in the game we spawn another in the foyer but we only have one player in the game so the other copies are shuffled into the encounter deck along with the encounter discard file and the lead investigator draws the weakness uh, what have you done so I'll just place it here so what it does we uh, as an additional cost for you to parlay you must discard the cards at random from your hand uh, action shuffle what have you done into your deck so I think because we want to parlay the police officers uh, I'll get rid of that quite soon and for each the following circumstances which is true place one clue on room 225 from the token bank and place one doom on an Arkham officer so uh, we didn't do any of these things so we place three clues here and Let's put the Arkham officer. So here is Sergeant Monroe, and he is in the boy. And then uh, one of the Arkham officers has three doom on him, and he is placed into the second floor hall. So what I'm thinking is that I will be parlaying him this turn at least uh, a couple of times to get rid of those rooms. So let's uh, shuffle the other copies of the officers into the encounter deck. And then we are ready to continue to Agenda 2A. So uh, it has the Doom threshold of 12. Post after an investigator at the same location as a ready police enemy discovers one or more clues at that location or deals damage to a humanoid enemy. Each ready police enemy at that location engages and, and that investigator and makes an immediate attack. So we don't want to discover clues while at the same location as these police officers and uh, we draw the encounter card and it is uh, <laughs> driven to madness so if there are no humanoid enemies in play prevent madness can search otherwise attach driven madness to the nearest humanoid enemy so it attaches to the arkham officer attached enemy gets plus one fight plus one health and plus one evade attached enemy loses aloof investigators cannot parlay with that attached enemy so it loses aloof and engages us so this police officer is getting quite mad so uh, that is the mythos phase uh, we continue to the investigation phase uh, and there is a forced effect after attached enemies evaded discard driven madness 
So I think this turn will be that we evade. We use the mine side. I will commit uh, a need cleaver just in case to that. Actually, we commit Peter. Because we have Peter already in play. So I am evading uh, use mine side. So my evasion is uh, 6 versus 2. Plus one from commit the, the Peter card, so seven versus two. Actually, I think there is no minus five in the bag, if I remember correctly, so we won't commit Peter to the test. So uh, we get a minus one. So the officer is evaded and it loses the driven to madness. Second action, we'll get rid of uh, what have you done. So we shuffle it back into our deck. I'll uh, do it in a moment because I have to change the sleeve on that card. I forgot that I, I need to have the correct color sleeve in it. So, um, yeah, last action, I think we'll parlay the Arkham Officer. So, parlay test will power 3. If you succeed, either automatically evade Arkham Officer or flip one of its doom to its crew side and take control of it. So, we basically can uh, get clues off of this guy. So, testing 6 versus 3. It's a tablet, and tablet is minus 3. If you uh, you may place one of your clues on your location to treat this as a minus one instead. Well, we won't do that, so we remove one, uh, we flip one uh, doom to clue side and take control of it. And that is our turn. So, yeah, I think I'll do the upkeep so that I draw the card next turn when I have uh, reshuffled the deck, but I'll take the resource and uh, this uh, officer readies. It, well, it was exhausted, now it readies. And it's aloof again, so it won't engage. And that is the turn. Let's go to the next turn. Okay, so I changed the sleeve on the. What have you done? Let's shuffle it and draw the card from our last upkeep phase. So just a quick shuffle to the deck, and let's see what we got. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll we draw the dark memory, so I think we'll have to get rid of that this turn. Okay, um, yeah, so let's go to the middle space. Uh, we add one doom to the agenda. Encounter card is an um, incriminating evidence attached to the nearest non crime scene location. Attached location gains the crime. Scene trait and gets plus two shroud. Uh, when you succeed, sus when you successfully investigate that attached location, it does, instead of discovering clues, discard incriminating evidence. So we'll just attach it here. Try to remember that it's underneath that card. Okay. Uh, I think this turned. We will just parlay this uh, police officer here. Uh, testing six versus three. I think I'll commit Peter now to the test. This would have read it. And it's a minus three. So we pass and uh, we take control of one of the clipped tools, so it clips and we gain control of it. Let's do it again. This time I'll commit the meat cleaver. And it's a minus three again. So again we uh, flip one of the dooms on the clue side and take control of it. We basically need one more clue to have enough clues, two clues on each of these, so we can 
talk to the police. Uh, last action, I will uh, play Dark Memory. So we add one Doom to the agenda. And that is that. Enemy phase. So at the end of. Uh, yeah, so this uh, Arkham officer has the patrol keyword. Patrol means that it moves to that location that the patrol keyword is referring to. So the nearest location with clues. Uh, well, it's this location, so this officer doesn't go anywhere. At the end of the enemy phase, uh, move one clue to Arkham officer from its location, flip it to its doom side. So it takes uh, control of this clue and it turns into a doom. And nothing else happens in the enemy phase. We go to upkeep. We draw one card and gain a resource. So we get the Spectral Razor, which is really nice because there are a lot of enemies in the deck and we have, like to have a way of dealing with them. So that is the turn. Let's go to the next turn. Uh, we add another Doom onto the agenda. Encounter card for this turn is uh, Hotel Security. Spawn nearest empty location. Hunter retaliate. If there is at least one guest enemy in play, Hotel Security loses Hunter and gains patrol nearest location with guest enemy. Okay, so the nearest empty location. We are not in an empty location and we could just spawn it. Let's spawn it at the roof. We'll start moving from there. Uh, we don't have to deal with it right away. We can think, uh, with these assets. I think we need to go investigate these offices and the basements to advance and put the clues on it. But first action, I will parlay again with the Arkham officer. I am pulling uh, 6 versus 3, so we need a minus 3 or better. It's an elder thing, it's a minus 3 if you fail, and there is an innocent enemy in the victory display. Take one horror, where uh, well, there is no and we pass. So uh, we flip this doom to a clue side and take control of it. So now we have enough clues to put the, onto these leads assets. A second action. We will move to the foyer. And it is a two shroud location with one clue. Uh, we can resign here. Uh, forced when you attempt to move out of the foyer while there is at least one guest enemy there here, they test agility X, where agility X is the number of guest enemies here. If you fail, you must spend one additional action to move. Well, there are no guest enemies here, so we'll continue moving and we'll move to the office because we have the uh, manager's key. And the office is a two shroud location. And uh, a three shroud location with two clues. There is an ability test uh, intellect. Zero for each point you succeed by you may move one to control by an investigator in the office to manager's key if it is, is in play and there's one victory point here. Uh, as we we'll, were playing standalone, I'm not that keen on <laughs> getting the victory points, but uh, we could draw uh, to the flame next turn. But maybe maybe we just. Uh, do the test with the mine side and transfer the clues. Okay, so that is the investigation phase done. We go to the enemy phase. So this uh, police officer patrols here and changes one clue to doom. And this uh, hotel security hunts here. Okay, so that is the enemy phase. We go to upkeep. We draw a card, and it's the Jewel of Aurelius, and we gain one resource. So I think we'll put the Jewel into play, so we can start drawing 
Well, I think we're quite well set up. So instead, I think... I think the jewel is not that important. Could save our resources for the... Uh, spectral Razor and all that good stuff. But yeah, let's see what happens. So let's go to the next turn. We are now at 5 Doom of 12. And Count Car is blood on your hands. So it's still a um, willpower 2 test. And there are no innocents in the victory dis uh, play, so we don't uh, have to discard uh, if we fail. So I'm just testing a 6 versus 2 and won't commit anything to the test. It's a minus 3, so we pass. Clearly, Agnes doesn't mind some blood on her, her hands. And uh, that is the middle space, so first action. Uh, we will spend one secret from mine side and uh, test this uh, intellect with uh, willpower. I'm testing 6 versus 0. It's a skull and if Skull is X. X is the number of guest enemies in play. At the moment there are zero guest enemies in play, so we can transfer up to six clues, but we only need two on the manager's key, so we place two clues there. Uh, we'll move back to the foyer and then to the basement. 12. The basement has one clue, and it's a shroud of four. There is a uh, action test intellect one. If you succeed, move a humanoid enemy at any location once towards the basement. After you defeat an enemy in the basement, move any number of clues controlled by investigators at the basement to the home of rituals if it's in play. So now we need an enemy here, so we can get some clues onto the home of rituals. Uh, speaking of enemies, uh, we go to the enemy phase. This uh, Arkham officer is just here investigating the crime scene, so we flip one clue to Doom and place it on him. This uh, hotel security moves here, and I think next turn we will get the hotel security down here and kill it if we don't get another enemy. So that's the enemy phase. We go to upkeep, uh, we draw a card, and it's the trail form, and we gain one resource. And that is our turn. Let's go to the next turn. Uh, we had another doom. So now we are at 7 doom of 12. So we don't have that long anymore. The encounter card is Cultist of the Enclave Spawn Basement. Well, that's convenient. Uh, Hunter, forced after cultist of the enclave attacks, reveal a random token from the chaos pack, if a skull, cultist, tablet, elder thing or out of hell symbol is revealed, place one doom on, this current, uh, on the current agenda. So we got uh, really lucky with this, so it's engaged with us. I think I will... Should I stab the cultist of the enclave with the Colossus and Dagger? I would be fighting 4 versus 3. I could commit the jewel to be 5 versus 3. So I'm 2 up. I think we'll just uh, Spectral Razor because then we can uh, just move and evade the hotel security. We don't need to really kill it. So I'm uh, Spectre Razoring the Cultist of the Enclave. So I am uh, 8 versus 3. So we get a 
Elder thing, it's a minus three, but we still succeed. So this cultist of the enclave is defeated. We can place two clues on the form of rituals. And then at the end of the round, so at the end of the round we can advance the act. So let's see, uh, we'll move to here. This uh, hotel security engages us. Uh, we should have this ready, so we'll... I think we can just evade without using the mine sign. Mm, yeah, I'll commit the Jewel of Aurelius at the test. So I'm in, uh, evading 5 versus 2, so I'm 3 up. So it's a minus 3, so we succeed. And uh, this uh, hotel security is evaded. That was our last action. We go to enemy phase. This uh, police officer keeps on investigating the crime scene and gets another doom. And uh, we go to upkeep, we draw a car, we get the holy rosary and we gain one resource. And at the end of the round we can advance because we have two clues on each of these. So we get the truth, uh, read scenario interlude, the truth on page 10 of the rules booklet. So let's uh, do a bit of reading. Well, there is a lot of text, so uh, basically uh, we are halted by Sergeant Monroe and we have to decide, uh, choose one, tell Sergeant Monroe the truth, proceed the truth to, or lie about your involvement. I think because we didn't uh, tidy up the room, we have no innocence in the uh, victory display. We'll tell the truth that we are innocent, so we got the truth too. So, um, after some talking to Sergeant Monroe, uh, Sergeant Monroe will only believe you if you collected enough evidence and did not try to cover up your involvement. If all of the following circumstances are true, skip to truth 5, otherwise skip to the truth 4. So, we have not cleaned up the blood, hit the body or tidied up the room. That's uh, that, that we did not do. Mm, actually, we passed that part. We have two clues per investigator on each uh, lead asset, so that's a check. And there are no innocent enemies in the victory display, so that is another check, so we can proceed to route 5. We get the police on our side, uh, and the sergeant believes us. We remember that the police are on our side. Choose an investigator to take control of some sergeant control. So uh, I'll take control of him. Just encounter deck and discard pile and all play areas from for each copy of Arkham officer and remove them from the game. So Luckily, even though this guy had a bunch of doom on him, he gets uh, removed. And we remove each Arkham officer from the encounter deck also. Quickly shuffle that and then we keep, uh, skip to truth 7. So uh, this involves some set up so I'll pause the video and do that and we continue from there so I'll be right back. Okay so uh, first of all uh, we re resolved the part where the manager's key and the Tome of Rituals are in play so uh, we remove all doom from play. We advance the act and agenda deck to the set aside the cul true culprit uh, version X which is here. It is both the current act and the current agenda. We spawn the set aside dimensional shambler into the basement. Uh, we shuffle each guest enemy in the victory display into the encounter deck along with the encounter discard pile. 
uh, that uh, we didn't do. Well, we have no um, nothing in the victory discord uh, victory display, so we just shuffle the encounter discord into the encounter deck, like so. Then we place two two doom onto the true culprit version X. And we are ready to continue playing. So, uh, the true culprit version X reads each guest enemy loses victory zero, loses innocent, and gains cultist. Uh, basement gains action test willpower four or agility four. You may remove one clue from a lead asset in the basement to reduce the difficulty of this test by two. If you succeed, remove one doom from the agenda. I think our plan is just to head down to the basement and uh, try to remove all the doom from the uh, true culprit card. And yeah, and of course in the upkeep, this uh, hotel security readies and engages us, uh, which we forgot to do. But yeah, this uh, is the end of this turn, so we can continue to the next turn. We add a doom to the true culprit, and we get a hotel guest uh, spawn nearest wall location, and it is in the foyer. So we place this guest into the foyer. Uh, first action. So let's. Uh, Let's recheck so it loses the victory zero, innocent, and gains cultist, but it is still aloof, so we don't have to deal with it that much. First action. I will ethereal form. So we are evading the I'll just take this guy over here a bit closer, so we are evading this uh, hotel security. Uh, we have a willpower of 6, and we add our agility, so we add 4, so we are evading 10 versus 2. And it's an Elder sign, so it's plus 1 for each horror on Agnes Baker. Well, it's a zero, but we still succeed. So uh, the hotel security is evaded. And now uh, we can't get. If you succeed, disengage from each other enemy engaged with you. And for the remainder of the round, you are ethere ethereal. Enemies cannot engage or be engaged with you. And you cannot attack or deal damage to them. So uh, we try to move here. Uh, we have, because there is a guest enemy at this location, we are testing uh, 4 agility versus 1. It's a minus 3, so we don't have to spend any extra actions. Last action, uh, we will try to do a willpower test to remove one doom from here. I will commit. Uh, I will commit um, uh, drone to the plane to the test. So I'm testing seven versus three. Uh, sorry, seven versus four. It's a minus one. We remove one doom by spending one clue. Oh, sorry, uh, we can drop the difficulty by two with this clue, so I, I dropped it by two. Okay. And that is our turn. Enemy face, uh, this guy doesn't do anything, and I think the hotel guest will 
move to the nearest crime she, uh, scene location, which is here. Uh, yeah, we just don't want that hotel guest here, so let's move it up there and uh, at the end of the enemy phase, if the hotel guest is at the crime scene location, and one room to the hotel guest, so let's just put the room there. And upkeep. This guy ready is. Uh, we gain one card. It's David Renfield, and we gain one resource. And at the end of the round, the effect of the ethereal form goes off, out, and this dimensional sampler evades us. And let's look at the dimensional sampler a bit. So it's a hunter. Uh, four fight, four health. Uh, evade monster extra dimensional elite after dimensional shambler deals you damage from its attack reveal a random token from chaos pack if it's an auto fail symbol it snatches you from this dimension remove dimensional shambler from the game and you are defeated okay but uh, as we were ethereal uh, it can't attack us, so that's that. So that is our turn. Uh, I can't remember if I took a resource, but it doesn't matter. We're not playing anything. We'll just try to. I think we'll try to remove the doom as fast as possible. Okay, so that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. Uh, we add another Doom. Encounter card is... A violent Outburst. The nearest. Uh, humanoid enemy readies, moves one location at a time until it reaches a location, engages you and makes an immediate attack. This isn't a humanoid, uh, this is. So... It moves here, engages us and attacks us, so it deals us 2 damage, and I'll put them on Sergeant Monroe. When Sergeant Monroe is dealt any amount of damage or horror, exhaust him to deal that much damage to a non-innocent enemy at his location. Any investigator Sergeant Monroe location may deal with ability. So I'll put the damage on uh, Sergeant Monroe, and I will exhaust it. And I will deal 2 damage to the hotel security, because it is not uh, innocent. And I think we will just try to do the action here. I'll use one clue, I'll drop the difficulty by 2. And uh, that means the hotel security and the dimensional chamberler will hit us. I will take one horror on... I will resolve this so that the chambler hits us first. I'll take one uh, horror on Peter, one horror on uh, Agnes. Agnes triggers her ability and deals one damage to this hotel security. So basically this hotel security doesn't have a window to hit because they are resolved one at a time. That's at least how I uh, think it works. And still we need to allocate two damage, so I'll put the damage onto myself. And we will resolve the test, remove the room. Uh, we drop the difficulty by so it's uh, willpower 2 versus 6, so minus 4 or better. It's a cultist. And there are no innocents in the victory display, so we succeed, we remove one doom. Uh, second action. I'll do it again. I'll uh, take the damage and horror. You take the horror. Peter, one more on myself, two damage on Agnes. Oh yeah, uh, before the last, let's see if the dimensional sampler takes us into 
another dimension. Uh, so it was a minus one. And let's see what happens now. <laughs> yeah, just figuring out that I may kill myself by trying this. Uh, it's an elder sign, so yeah, it it doesn't do anything. We, we took the damage and let's test the willpower test. Uh, six versus two. It's a tablet minus three, so we pass. Uh, and we remove our doom. Last action. Let's just risk it and I'll take the horror and the damage here and here. So Sergeant Monroe is defeated. And let's check if we <laughs> die. No, luckily. And we will spend the clue and actually boost it by one. So we are up by five. And it is a zero. So we remove the last doom from here. And if there is no room on this agenda, advance. So we advance. If this agenda advance because of you completed its objective, the book is closed now and as you fasten the latch and tuck it under your arm, you hope and pray that you can keep it safe and that it will never be open again. You know firsthand that only madness lies within its breadth pages and it is now up to you to protect it from falling into the wrong hands. You breathe a bit easier and find some measure of comfort in knowing that the strange going on of the Excelsior have been put to rest at least for now. We get the resolution one. So resolution one. Nobody will ever believe that you uh, what you witnessed at the Excelsior. No, not three days later, the hotel has, was open again, like nothing had ever happened. You know better though. You witnessed it all firsthand. The events continue to haunt your dreams and your waking thoughts. Even now, you go out for your, out of your way to avoid the Excelsior. Though weeks have passed and there has been no sign of any other nefarious machines within its accursed walls. The only thing that can Quiet the echoing memories of that horrible experience is a visit to the local speakeasy. But all the booze in the world can't keep the grisly visions from your nightmares, waking you in the dead of night with a violent start, soaked in sweat. That's when you notice the person asking around town about the Excelsior. Innocent questions at first, but more prodding with each passing day. Surely they will believe you. Somebody has to. You may have broken free from Excelsior's grasp, but there will be other victims of that you are sure. You grab a piece of paper and hastily scribe a note. It's all a facade. Room 225, tonight. It is not over. If they can see past the veil of Excelsior's operations, then maybe others can too. It may not be too late to stop it all from happening again. So we write in our campaign log uh, that the Excelsior is quiet for now. The lead investigator must add the what have you done weakness to their deck. They may also choose to add a bloodstained dagger story asset to their deck as well. Both cards do not count towards the investigator's deck size. If the police are on your side, any one investigator may choose to add Sergeant Monroe to their deck. This card does not count towards the investigator's deck size. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory x value each card the victory display well uh, we got zero experience, zero experience from this scenario but yeah this was basically just to demonstrate how this agnes deck works and i really like this scenario for deck testing and uh, just overall it's it's really fun because the replayability is so high with all the different leads so uh, that was 
Mine's I Agnes Baker deck in the murder at the Excelsior Hotel. Uh, let me know what you thought about the deck and as always I'll put the deck link for Arkham DP to the video description so you can try it out. So thanks for watching and until next time.